All right, let's do a walk around of this 2014 uh, Jeep Cherokee. Uh, this is the reintroduction of the Cherokee nameplate, uh, which has been gone since 2001. You'll see the styling similarities between this model and the Grand Cherokee. But uh, unlike the Grand Cherokee and unlike previous uh, Cherokees, this vehicle um, is based on a front wheel drive layout, so it's a crossover even though uh, nominally Jeep calls it four wheel drive, four by four, uh, when it's equipped with one of its two available active drive systems. Um, but uh, the engine is mounted transversely, whether you get the four or the six, and uh, most of the power does go to the front wheels most of the time. However, uh, both systems are more capable than is typical in, in crossover SUVs, in particular the Active Drive 2 system, um, which has a rock crawl mode and um, a function for the 9-speed transmission that simulates uh, a low range, though there is no 2-speed transfer case. You control the transmission uh, and the four-wheel drive system via this knob here, very similar to what you'd see in a Land Rover. And you'll note that in addition to the uh, typical automatic snow and sport, there's also a sand and mud. Now this vehicle has um, the, uh, the, the, uh, the one system, not the two, um, but still you get this additional sand mud mode, which most all-wheel drive crossovers, in fact all the crossovers in this segment do not have. Um, got a pretty decent back seat here, uh, and the balance between the front and the back seats uh, is much more even than it is in a lot of the other crossovers, uh, like the Ford Escape uh, and the Honda CRV which have a lot of room in the front, but their back seats are kind of tight. In this one, uh, it's very close to being even, about 40 inches in both rows. Uh, so you've got a pretty, pretty decent uh, passenger space there. The one deficit this thing has relative to pretty much all the others uh, that are available in this segment is that the cargo capacity is, is significantly less, both behind the second row and with the, um, the second row folded. Uh, it's a lot less than uh, in actually in several of the smaller, physically smaller crossovers. It's not terrible. Uh, you can see there's still pretty good space here. Uh, and because of the tall gate and low lift floor, you can actually do a lot with it. So it's not too terrible, but it is less than you'd find in a lot of the other crossovers. Uh, another thing this vehicle has that very few, almost no, uh, vehicles in this class have anymore is a six-cylinder engine, 3.2-liter V6. Let me pop the hood so you can see it. Uh, that is descended from the 3.6 V6 that's used in a lot of other current Chrysler products. Um, most of the small crossovers that are available now only come with four-cylinder engines. Some of them have step-up turbocharged four-cylinder engines, but very few um, still have a V6. You can get a V6 in the Chevy Equinox, but the Equinox is a much larger vehicle, really mid-sized, and this is this is somewhere between compact and mid-sized, so it's it's about half a foot shorter overall. It's a really nice engine, 271 horsepower. No complaints about it. The only thing that, well, the only thing I wouldn't particularly like about it is that you can see how tight it is in here, and I wouldn't want to be the one to have, have to reach in there and try and do any service on this thing because there is very, very little room. Um, but the good news is that you don't really have to buy the V6. Uh, the base 2.4 liter engine in this car is actually pretty powerful and delivers pretty good performance. It's 181 horsepower and with the uh, the 9 speed automatic which is also standard with that engine uh, it'll get to 60 with the front wheel drive version uh, in just over 8.1, 8 8.2 seconds which is very good for some perspective. The CRV takes close to 10 seconds uh, and the Toyota RAV4 is comparably slow and the Ford Escape uh, comes with a 168 horsepower engine standard and you really have to go up to the 2 liter turbo engine which is two engines up uh, in order to, um, to get better performance than you get standard in this Jeep. The interior is really nicely laid out. There's your gauge package um, and here are your secondary controls. You've got this nice flat screen here. Got fairly nice big meaty buttons um, to manipulate which I prefer to the little tiny buttons that you find in a lot of cars. Uh, one of the things that you get in the, uh, the Cherokee that's unusual is an SD card standard in all the base trims. And uh, this particular model does not have it, but you can get two different types of sunroof. They have a two-piece deal uh, with a fixed, one's got a fixed panel and then the other one opens, or you can get a panorama roof, which is really nice. Uh, and you can get uh, some other neat stuff like um, heated windshield wipers. This model doesn't have it, but you can get that part of the cold weather package, and if you order that, you also get um, heated seats, and there's a variety of other packages that you can get with it, 
But the long and short of it is, uh, you got a vehicle here that's a lot more capable than your typical crossover. Uh, while not being a, a gigantic gas pig like most traditional uh, rear-wheel drive based SUVs are. Uh, and the handling is really quite good. Um, much better than you would probably imagine for a vehicle of this type. Uh, the full review is up over at epautos.com or libertariancarguy.com. And if you have any comments, uh, good or bad, I encourage you to post them. And um, look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.